Tai, I was with the unit, uh, the uh, UMass Boston Nantucket program, and I did my, uh, my uh, project on the effects of disturbance on Nantucket's terrestrial macrotone. I've been working with a local scientist on the island, Andrew McMahon Foster, who's with the Mariah Metro Association. And this was a study he had done in 2008, looking at uh, burn disturbance and load disturbance to keep this area of Nantucket in a successional stage of sand-plating grassland, which is very rare worldwide. 90% of it exists only on Nantucket. And that is why keeping it in this stage of sand plain grassland is very important. So they do various controls like burning and mowing to keep it in that state. But this also has an effect on the things that live in those areas too. As a result, we're gonna get some issues with that. And that's what I was looking at. How it affected, you know, the insects. These macrofauna I was looking at, you know, the, the bees and various other creatures like spiders and flies and so forth. So what I was looking at is how the low disturbances affected these terrestrial creatures in those areas. So I was using his pitfalls to do my study with. So I spent a lot of time with him at the Mariah Mitchell looking through his pitfalls and looking at these insects. And so what I was trying to do with it is determine how it affected the population there. So that's what I was investigating. So the disturbance has an effect by what maintenance is occurring in that habitat. And so sitting there and looking at the insects, my methods was basically I spent a lot of time in the basement sorting through uh, petri dish of bugs most of the time. And that's what I was doing for this project, looking at the types of things that there were all the pitfall traps I actually sorted for. So I determined them by year because that's what he had the data for. So it was annually, one year since mowing, three years since mowing, and five years since mowing. And I categorized it and then I count through all the specimens here. And this is what I got in terms of the Shannon Diversity Index and the evenness for the areas I was looking at. So in the, tra in the traps, I counted 13 orders and I was only able to get it down to order and not all the way down to species. So that could be a different for the species as well. So looking at the orders, I found that some of my results were skewed one way or another because I had very different counts between each of the students. And the ideal here is basically how I got these numbers for this particular graph. And overall, these are the 13 orders that I have and how they stack up against the, the um, average counts for each of the students. And obviously, as you can see here, I had very little for some species, for some orders, and a lot of others. Like I had a lot for isopoda and hymenoptera and Oh, and Polyopolia. So basically, what ended up happening is for, the, for certain orders, like what we're looking at here, the beetles, which is Polyoptera, the Hymenoptera, which are your ants and your wasps and your bees, and the Isopoda had really large numbers in my data. And that's what their graphs look like, as you can see in these graphs that the isopoda had a lot with frequent disturbance here. Well, the, sorry, that was for hymenopter. The hymenopter had a lot for frequent disturbance. The isopoda varied, so they liked some disturbance. And the coleoptera preferred less disturbance. 
or no disturbance in that. And that basically summarized it because for all the orders, it really varied across the board. So we had some high, some low. Um, for a coleopter, coleopter is basically your beetles. For isopoda, it's your pill bugs and your cell bugs, and hymenopter are your ants and your um, bees and wasps. And because of how my results varied, some species, some orders liked the disturbed areas more, while others liked it less, and that affected the numbers. But there are also other factors that could have affected the numbers which skewed my results one way or the other. As for that, there, there were definitely some patterns here, but for what I was looking at, it really wasn't clear what those patterns were or what affected them. And that could be something else for somebody to look at using my data as a basis. And I would like to see someone try and use my data as a basis. That would be a really great thing to see, given that I had some really interesting results across the board for these 13 orders that were present, and every one of those things varied. And I need to thank Andrew McKenna Foster of the Mariah Mitchell Association and the Mariah Mitchell Association for allowing me to do my work. Sarah Okai of the Field Station, Elizabeth Boyle for helping me along and allowing me to do this. And I'd like to thank everyone in this room for being here to listen to me speak. And now for questions. <laughs> bugs that you looked at and you quantified and everything, mm -hmm. were those, I know you said they were from different years, but were they all sampled at the same season? At the they, same were time sampled, of year? they were all sampled in 2008. Oh, okay. Andrew did his first study, which is what this map was from. Okay. So he took all the samples in 2008. Gotcha. He kept a record of the um, disturbances, mm -hmm. what he was looking at in that particular project. I just went back through them and did another project with the same samples. Okay, thank you. It's the MOE atlas. So they were all collected in 2008, so the MOE had been done like seven or 2008. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got you. So the one year was 2007, the three years. Okay, yeah. that's, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Anything else? 